a good mo good morning everyone and good evening to nancy kids you know it is 11:30 in the us where she is and she's in daylight saving so she's actually at 12:30 pm am in the night uh, so luckily she's uh, leading the talk so we won't bore her um, so i am supriya bhualka i'm the founder of coding and more Uh, we are a personalized edtech and we want children like you to learn emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and coding and uh, in my mind uh, cyber security is an integral part of any technology which is why uh, this month we are focusing on cyber security and cyber safety um, it is important for everyone to understand you know what it means to be mindful what are the things that they should watch out for um so we have with us today nancy spizzo she is a security and compliance manager at patent health you know she has as you can see all her titles cissp cisa um so many uh, you know i was telling her she sounds like she is a surgeon with many many uh, degrees so in spite of being in audit and compliance for so many years she's still learning still upskilling because with technology you always have to be up to date so over to nancy and before i give it over to nancy kids this is your space please ask your questions because i know you'll spend a lot of time you know learning gaming chatting with you know friends and maybe sometimes people you don't know so if there are terms you have heard please ask you know don't be shy it would help others too okay so thank you so much nancy for being with us here today uh over to you Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Or good evening. I guess it's actually even almost good morning for me too. Just very early. So I appreciate all of you coming because this is such a great topic to talk about. Um, as I was talking to your teachers, learned that you know, I the one thing I said about an IT and security and all the other related. Uh, careers that you could possibly have, you will be constantly learning. So if that's something that you like, it's always there for you. And and it is different after you're out of school when you keep learning. It's just something that's more fun, and it's just something that's going to become part of what you do. And it's going to make every day something new. So you're always going to be learning stuff, and it's just always going to be a fun day. So I don't even mind getting staying up till twelve thirty at night to talk. because I love what I do. So um, it's always fun to share that. But I'm going to take a couple of different approaches to talking about cybersecurity because I normally talk to people about what jobs they can do in cybersecurity which are not always coding related. However, sometimes some of those jobs mean staying safe online and how we take that as approach from a company perspective to help people stay safe online. So I'm going to bounce around a little bit on perspective and it's going to probably drive a lot of questions. So I can't wait for that part. So you're going to hear so sometimes you'll hear people say stay safe on online and don't click on those links. But what does that mean? And it gets confusing between what you should click on versus what you shouldn't click on. So we're going to get into some of what, of how you will you will be able to know the difference. Another thing that I like to talk about besides careers and just staying safe online are also some of these buzzwords that you hear. Artificial intelligence, deep intelligence, machine learning. These are all some of the same thing. So we're going to talk about what it means to me and then we can I can talk about how maybe what you're finding online as a definition might be might be a little different than what you may may hear me say and all of the what you're going all of the definitions that you hear are probably okay they're probably all the same thing just there's so many different flavors to it it kind of that's what makes this career in the space so exciting is that it's not all one thing there are lots of different different ways to look at it i'll talk to you a little bit about pattern health because that's really what people got excited to talk to me about when they heard what pattern health was doing and how people who are who are using these non-coding 
options to build code. So that's kind of fun to think about too, that you're, you're non-coding to code something that people are using as code. So we'll get into some of that as well. Let's see if I can figure out how to click and change slides here. This is just a slide about pattern health. And I'm going to I'm going to breeze through some of this because it's kind of boring, actually. I'm not afraid to tell you that. But it is it's really more about who pattern health is as a business. And we use this slide just to make sure that people who um, talk to us know who they're talking to. But pattern health, there are two words here, patterns and health. And so those two words are very deliberate in the company I work for. We build our technologies on top, of, on top of no code. So that's kind of fun. We work with researchers and clinical innovators who are working with lots of data, health data, and specifically um, data and health related to, I don't know, improving behaviors behind health. And I'll show you some of those screens that we use and, and what makes it kind of fun but it also has a game effect to it. So I'll show you some of that and it's gonna be really kind of interesting to you and it's gonna feel like we're playing games, but that's sometimes how people now improve their health is feeling like they're playing a game and then they engage and they feel better. All of that sits on top of data and they're starting to build artificial intelligence based on that data. And, and it's, it's really kind of fascinating it's not true artificial intelligence. There are people and scientists who have to work with that data. So, so let, me let me show you what we do every day. We will, and I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. We will, I'm sure you all know, we have a researcher, people who do research in universities and at hospitals about health. And I'm just gonna use a couple of examples of here and you could really extend it to just about anything. But let's say someone had a problem with their heart or with their weight or something and they'll go to the doctor and the doctor will say, hmm, if you exercised or you ate better, you could get better. And that's a pretty simple way of looking at it because you could also probably take a medicine and there are lots of other factors, but that's pretty much what we're talking about. But everybody these days likes to wear a smartwatch or they like to wear their Fitbit or they might like to wear some other kind of thing that measures their heart. And they want that, they like that kind of, of thing. And so that thing that you wear is gathering data. And guess what artificial intelligence is made of? Data, lots of data, data that we can start predicting what the next element is going to be or the next outcome is going to be because we have a lot of data and it starts to have patterns. And that's what computers do. Sorry, my cat has now decided to attack the podium. So really? So, so that researcher starts collecting data and they start seeing patterns, right? So those patterns are important because not only is there a pattern to it, but let's say exercise makes someone feel better. And that's the outcome we want is to make them feel better. We want to design a program that will make the person exercise and develop a healthy way of doing things into a pattern that achieves an outcome that we want. Now, if that person doesn't exercise, they're not going to get better. And I'm just using this as an example. But they're not gonna get better. So we know that that pattern of adding exercise helps the person feel better. And when they don't exercise, they don't feel better. So we work with our researchers to develop what elements in their phone application they want the person to do throughout their day and report on to make them feel better. And then Without coding, which is really brilliant, we develop an app and we put that together. And we deploy it through the internet to your person's phone and they get their phone and they will put in their weight for today. They'll put in how much they exercised. 
They might put in how they're feeling that day, but there's lots of little modules to it, and that's how we work. Seems like that would be pretty automatic, except that when you're working with researchers and you're working with health and you're working with the science and trying to predict behaviors, all of a sudden a lot of doctors come into play and a lot of people want a lot of data to help predict that outcome. So you can start to imagine it's not a one person job. There are lots of jobs the person that collects the data, the person that designs the, the app itself. There are lots of these non-coding careers that sit behind also very deep coding careers in that artificial intelligence and data design and analytics space. So that's really what this, is, this slide is trying to show you. But, I, but if you see the, the smaller phones here, these are pictures of our app that we have samples. And you can see in the first picture, this, this particular researcher wanted an exercise app or a relaxation of their muscle app. So that person can click that video. So that video is being included. And the second picture right here in the middle, you see there is really small and I'm sorry about that, but there's a little turtle here. And we've now designed this to have a lot of different pets. So we can have a dog, we can have a cat. I think there's a, a dolphin and there's a turtle. And the, and the cat will actually turn their back to you when you don't exercise. So the fun thing is you feed your pet by doing your healthy behaviors through the day. And at the end of the day, your pet's really happy. And what we find in the artificial intelligence based on the data that people like working with pets and they like taking care of them and they will take care of themselves to take care of their pet. So it's really kind of fun in pattern health that, we've, that we have all these different patterns of behavior that we can apply into the data in science and research to help people feel healthy. So all of this stuff is done with some very interesting careers, privacy, compliance, audit, because guess what? When we're collecting all that data, we have a lot of laws we have to follow. So that means a lot of people have to make sure that the laws are being followed and the data has to be secured. So you can imagine with all that data that we're collecting, we have to protect it. And I want you to think about when you're online, what data you might be giving to somebody and whether that data is being protected. So just think about that. So we're collecting data for people and we're having to protect it. And we're doing that because one, it's the right thing to do. And secondly, because we have laws to follow. And when you start thinking about taking someone's data and doing the right thing, what are some words that come to mind? Ethical, honest, integrity, maybe even some leadership words come into, come into fact and to play here as well as being trustworthy. So those are all things that, that we develop in our whole lives on, on when we're going into cybersecurity, we also have to do all these things that we're taught in our whole life in how to behave and how to be honest and truthful and do the right thing. So those are all the things that we're having to do with data as well. Now, this is just a slide to kind of show you all the different people that work in a company. And I'm sure you, you all have lots of people around you who, who work in, in some of these types of careers. We have people who manage projects. We have people who code. We have people who run data centers, run an information security like cybersecurity, people who write help text and do all the data analytical careers and compliance. So I just wanna throw that out there because it is something that we like to talk about as, as just kind of plant the seed on where some of the data goes and how many people actually see it. So when I talk about people protecting data and we're talking about being online, I'm gonna get into some more technical topics here. The one thing that we do is we encrypt data. We encrypt our laptops. We're encrypting that data when it goes through the internet. 
and we're going to talk about SSL, and I'm going to plan. I'm going to tell you about TLS because SSL is like old news. TLS is the new thing. So TLS is important to encrypt that data, and then anywhere that data goes on a USB or a CD, we're encrypting it so that people can't read it. The next thing we tell people, and the next thing that we help in our app is when you're logging in, you need to use your user ID and you shouldn't tell anybody what it is. And you really need a really good password. Because if I can tell you that I have a cat or a dog and I tell you the name, that's probably half my passwords, right? Everybody uses their dog or their cat's name. So don't do that. Don't use your birth date. Don't use your address. Don't tell people that if you're gonna use that word. So use a passphrase, use a sentence. Use a favorite saying. Replace all the vowels with letters. You can do a lot of different things, spell words backwards, but do some things that, that are random to you and only you. So I have a way I do it. I'm not going to tell you, <laughs> but you know, I, I do know that there are people who use automated generators and that kind of thing. And those things are all great, but yeah, don't share some, because if somebody knows your password, they can log in as you, and then they they can see your data. And that becomes even more dangerous as you get an adult too. So just you know, know that that's not a good thing. The next thing that we're doing is not only do we not do we have a password, but we have something called two-factor authentication. Anybody here heard of that? Any heard of two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication? That's where we add something onto the password so that you know that and I know that and the system knows that but not many other people do it and guess what when I have a multi-factor that means they can't have it with them physically you're the only one that has it so we have passcodes I have one on my phone it has a little app to it and it generates the number and I have to put it in sometimes I get a text for some of my um, less sensitive application. And sometimes I use my fingerprint on my Mac. I can, I can put my fingerprint there and it knows who I am. So no one else can use my fingerprint. Now, if you're a twin, that's kind of a different thing. I know um, twins, but I mean, if you're a twin, you probably trust your twin. So there's, there is that fingerprint that could be identical for some people. So that's why we also have two factors because I'm, they may not have the same password. So anyway, Lots of things to think about in cybersecurity that aren't always on the surface. This is what we talked about a few minutes ago about ethics and leadership. And you're going to hear ethics and leadership over the next few years because ethics and leadership is what we want everyone to grow into. Ethics is, is being very honest. And as I was telling your teachers as we were starting, as an auditor, I have to report exactly what I see and exactly what I read, and it can't be anything else. My best friend can't come tell me and, and say, you know, would you say that you saw red when you opened that, that application up instead of yellow? And I'm like, I can't do that. I have to report it the way I saw it. And those, are, and those become my ethics. That's something that's in me to tell the truth. And my integrity of doing that over and over again, of being truthful and accurate in the way I say and what I see, has pe makes people trust me. And trusting when I say it's red instead of yellow is very important because when I write a report and someone else reads it, they know exactly what is happening. So in audit and compliance and law, it's very important to be accurate. And by, and by the way, isn't that what being a good friend is? Being honest with your friends, being truthful with your friends, being something that you can, you can be counted on. And so I tell people, ethics and leadership sound like really big words and they sound like really hard things to do, but they're really not. They're just being a good friend to people. And so when you think like that, now you have a lot of friends, which... I'm very lucky to have that because I've made a lot of friends in audit because they trust me and I'm always telling them the truth. And so it becomes a very wonderful thing to do is to get up and, and go to work every day with people that, that like and trust you. So 
keep that in mind as you're going through and you're practicing your, your ethic and leadership skills, that that's really an important thing to do. And by the way, the other thing I would tell you is leaders aren't the person that are first in line and telling everyone where to go. That's not what leadership is. Leadership is doing the right thing and having people count on you for that. And so we don't always have to be the first in line. We don't always have to be the president of the company to have a good leadership skill. So keep that in mind too, that you can be a great leader without having to be the first in line. So here comes, here comes that fun thing. And I have kids that do online gaming. So I know, I know how much fun it is. And by the way, I love to play online games too. But I have seen some, and, and I have, I have um, unfortunately seen some of the damage caused by online games. So I'm not going to try to lecture you about them, but I do want you to, to understand some of the pros and cons, because I think those are important to be knowledgeable in what you're doing when you're playing games online. First of all, it's a ton of fun. I mean, does everybody here play games? Come on. I know you do, right? It's, it's so much fun. Yeah, thumbs up, totally. Okay. But also online is fun because you're learning. And that's fun too, because there's so many resources online. We were talking about some coding resources how you, that are for free. You can go online and learn how to code. And that's really cool to do online too, because it teaches you how to layer your statements and it teaches you how to do, um, how to, how to think like the computer and how to make the computer think like you because that's what artificial intelligence is. So that's, so those are really important skills, but guess what else it does? It makes us waste time. Anybody sat there and played a game for like 20 or 30 minutes and thought it felt like two minutes? I hate when that happens, but guess what? It is a very big time waster if you can let it get away with you. But also if I turned my camera off, right now. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I want to go back. If I turn my camera off, would you know who I was? No. And if I camouflage my voice, you wouldn't know. And by the way, because it's computer, I could put an avatar up or I could put a different picture of somebody else up and you would know. I could go online and get a picture of somebody in your family and put it up and you would think it was them. So it's very hard to know who's behind something unless you're live, which is why I'm live with you so you can see me. We're going to talk about some other things that we did so that we would know who each other was before I came today, because those are important skills to do, right? And so not only that, but also online, we get email. I'm sure you're all getting to the point where you have an email address and you're starting to read email. And if you aren't, and you don't have an email address, somebody in your family does, and you're probably, you know, exposed at least to email and you know how that works. I know you've seen links in those emails and all it takes is one click and guess what? Malicious code starts downloading. And there are some really smart people that have figured out how to do that. They've also figured out how to do it without clicking the link. So that's even, that's even more dangerous is that they can bury worms and viruses into just pictures that you open up and look at. We get spam, we get spam all the time. Hopefully it goes to the spam filter. We get ads, but those ads can have some dangerous content in them as well. And that's where phishing comes in. It's not like phishing, like you're gonna go phishing up, but that is kind of what they're doing. They're trying to reel you in. They wanna click. And, and the famous one is some game that you've been on you have to re-log in through an email, click the link to reestablish your account, reconnect your account. And guess what? That may or may not be the place. So to be careful, you scroll over, but sometimes scrolling over to see where the address is going to take you can be a little bit difficult. So it's just really hard to know. And and we get into that trust thing again and those ethics of really good companies won't do that to you. So knowing the company that you're working with, the company that's playing, that's publishing the game you're playing, those are really important. 
And no one expects that you may be able to do that deep research, but it's good to get a parent or a teacher or another adult or maybe even an older brother and sister. Hey, I found this game. Is this one safe for me to play? Is this a company that we know? Is this a good company? Is this a company that's had problems? Is this a company that is known for doing something dangerous to us? So those are some important things to do as well as to check the ratings of the company and make sure and the reviews of the company and, and having people to talk to about that. Because again, no one person can know it all. And that's why we have all of our friends and families and resources to go to. And that's why I would say, ask for help. Help's not a weakness in our career in cybersecurity. All day today, I was on the phone with people asking for people's advice. And can you look at this because I see it this way. And, and lo and behold, that person would see it a different way. And that was a really good thing for us because it helped us get out and flesh out what this control was trying to get us to do. And so we, we all figured it out together, but no one's expecting you to know all this together. And then you've all heard about ransomware. It's kind of like in the news everywhere. I have a little slide about it. I don't wanna to get too deep into it because there's lots of different ways it can happen, but pretty much you click on something, it downloads. It starts encrypting your files and they bury a key in there. And then you get a screen that says, unless you pay us, we're not giving you the key to unlock your data. And by the way, you may pay them and you're still not gonna get your data because they have your money at that point. So ransomware is really kind of a dangerous thing. And see, sometimes also these games ask you that if you click on this, you'll get coins or uh, things, you know, for your game, right? That your children should Yeah. Against reputation of the company, it might be an okay thing in some games. And then some games you're downloading a worm. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've heard about some of these games where people have been able to hack in and steal other people's coins out of their games. They just take their, I don't know, I guess there are like, different components of, of the hunt or whatever you have, you get pieces and game pieces. And yeah, it's really kind of unfortunate that, that that's, a, that's an area of fun for some people. I'm not sure they're really having fun, but it, you know, it's definitely their, their version of entertainment. So I'll go back to online safety. And I just say, use strong passwords. Make sure no one can get into your account. Change it if you can. Um, do research. Here's a hard one. Read the privacy policy. Even I don't like to do that because it's always long and it's full of legal language. However, ask your parents to read it because a lot of times they're saying, while you're playing our game, we're going to read everything on your computer because we don't care what you think. We don't, you know, if you're okay with it, we're okay with it. So you don't really know what you're agreeing to when you're playing games online. So I always say, ask for help here and really read it. And yes, it's going to slow you down before you start playing that game, but take a few minutes and do that and let your parents read that and make sure that on the computer you're on, it's safe. And that's important. Nancy, and then, your question. Mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you. You know, when we talk about children going to certain websites or certain companies, sometimes parents may also not know. So is there a sort of an authenticated mm. uh, body, you know, or a website through which they can go to know uh, whether certain companies are safe? Do we have that at all? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think there's any governing type body for that. You just have to read the privacy policies. And the same with accepting cookies. A lot of companies are posting in the bottom about what kind of cookies you'll allow. And it's very tempting because you're in a hurry and you wanna learn or you wanna get back to your game just to click that. But I actually open it up and I turn all the cookies off. And because that they're tracking what you're doing with that cookie. So there's really, 
that's you know why it's there so that you can turn it off you have the option so very interesting now now for those of us that kind of geek out on the cybersecurity side that's how they're behave they're building some of their behavior analytics and so you know to be safe online kind of prevent some of that data collection, but it's also unauthorized data collection. And so now we go back into the ethics of not doing the right thing. So all of this comes together and just making sure that you know exactly what you're doing is very complicated. It's, being online is a very complicated um, transaction because you're exchanging data with a company. There's a company behind these games and behind these um, any kind of these applications, there's a whole company behind them that are there to collect data or transact the game. That's what they're there for. So when you're online, use your ethics and your leadership skills to make good decisions and ask your parents for help. And again, good leadership is doing the right thing and asking Parents and teachers and doing your research is all part of that. If somebody's doing something to you online, use the block feature. You can block people. It's okay. And after they're blocked, they're blocked. So it, it kind of stops there. Report bad stuff to the teachers and parents or any other adults. Don't, don't try to do that yourself. Um, I have known people who did and... Um, they always, they always come and say, I wish I had come to you sooner. And so it's a very real thing. Um, and just, you know, we talked about, be careful talking about with, with people you don't know. Hover, you can hover over a thing and you can see the link. It tells you where you're about to go. So know where you're going or don't click it. You don't have to click it. Um, and then back to personal ad, you know, don't put your birth date or anything online. So that's, that's all the prepared document question, you know, prepared slides I have, because I want to leave a lot of time for questions. So what other questions might you have? I think Rushin has one. Yeah. So first of all, I want to ask ah. that mm -hmm. uh, about the app that you're talking so do we have yes. to like manually write about how much did I exercise today? I mean, just for as an example. I'm sorry, what, what, tell me your question. So my question is that, for example, I'm talking about your app and you used an example of the exercise. Mm -hmm. So do we have to manually go to the app and write how much did I exercise today? What you would do in this, well, First, the way we've designed this is with a two-factor authentication. So our researchers have codes to invite you to even use the app. It's not an app that just anybody can use. You're working with doctors when you're in our apps because we are working with very large institutional type uh, research hospitals who are doing research on experimental treatments. And so it's not something you or I would be able to use. I don't even get to use this app. But when, when, we, when someone's reporting the exercise, it can be a number of different ways that this app might be coded. So you can see all the different lines. Those all get pulled as modules into the code with that designer, that program manager who's working with the researcher, she'll say, what are your goals? What are you trying to do? Just get the person to exercise. So all you have to do is click a box. Do you need them to um, tell me how many minutes they exercised or do you need to actually have the Fitbit app connect and track the exact exercise that's happening? So it's it's, it could be different based on what that researcher is trying to study about the person's exercise and their outcome. Fun, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, yeah, but I was thinking if I have to write, like, write it manually, if they would also write it manually, that could take to a whole another level of pattern. Because if I am writing 30 minutes and I'm actually exercising only for 20 minutes, that could lead to a different pattern. 
yes, if you're not telling the truth, that's a different exactly. thing together. Yeah. So, then ethics so, come into play. Yeah. So I do have some uh, an experimental app on for pattern health. So you can see, and I actually, I don't know if you can see. We'll see if I can get the light to go here. But I have the cat, <laughs> and so <laughs> my cat is is not he was. Well, She's trying to take a nap because it's one o'clock in the morning. But <laughs> but you can also see, let's see, did I walk my 5,000 steps? Well, it's, well, I've actually walked zero steps because it's after midnight now and I haven't walked since it turned over. But from yesterday, let's see if I can look at yesterday. You can, let's see, did I get my steps in? I did. So you can see it's tracking by my app because here's my walking. So it, I'm not actually telling it how many steps I walked. It's pulling from my Fitbit. Okay, so and that's it's your... actual data. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so back. it knows exactly. Yeah, and the, and the meter is they want me to walk my pattern health, right? They want us to walk every day because they want us to, to um, get exercise in the day and not just sit at our desk. So we're asked to move 5,000 steps in a day. And we also have some work stuff in here too, which is kind of funny how they got that in there. But, um, but you can see, I got to my 5,000 step goal. So my mm -hmm. cat's pretty happy today. And it also has a little meter at the top. So you can see this looks just like the pictures that I sent you. But we do have some researchers that in that first exercise that might be someone who is in an accident and they have like neck pain and they might be doing a neck neck exercise and then when they're done and the video plays that might be all we ask the person to do because again behaviorally if you ask someone to do too much they're going to quit doing it they don't want to mm -hmm. they don't want to be bothered with it but also we find that having a video encourages someone to get involved too. So having that video to play along rather than your doctor who writes a piece of paper and says, go home and do 10 setups every day. I mean, how many people do that? It's not fun, is it? But if you had an app where you had to feed your turtle by doing your 10 sit-ups and you just click the box to feed the turtle because you did your 10 setups, you might engage a little more. So there's, so we're adding this app on top of what we know behaviorally that doing sit-ups every day is a good healthy thing so and that's pretty simple because we do work with a lot of people who are have cancer they have you know a lot of different diseases they have heart issues so these these apps and 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 who doesn't like playing with their with their mobile device or their phone, right? Who doesn't like doing that? So it becomes a game. So we gamify the experience, which then adds in that artificial intelligence piece on the data on the backside of the data gathering. And then we add in some behavioral science as well, a whole different discipline. Yeah, so it's really, it's really fascinating, which is why I came to work at this company because it's really fascinating. And I just get to audit it all. <laughs> I, think I see a couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Anvi. Yes, hi. Uh, so I had a question, you know, um, our children, and of course, even adults, they, like you said, you know, they play games online. And while doing mm -hmm. so, they also have uh, this chat feature where they have people oh. from all over the world who they can yes. chat to. They have people sometimes spamming them. Uh, is there something some additional features something they should be mindful about or we should be mindful about while talking to these people uh, with respect to security and safety it's so dangerous isn't it it's so dangerous because you can't see the person you don't know who they are there's an avatar with that with that person so I could pop up an avatar too right I could go get one I could take pictures of my sister and put it up and no one would know that I could go take pictures of my mom and put it up here and you still wouldn't know who I am 
and I could disguise my voice because we have voice analyzers. So even if you're talking to me, I may not look like the right. Now I'm terribly honest. I've met with your school leadership and I've met with other people here many times before I came today and they've checked my background and they've checked my resume and, and all of that kind of stuff. So there's face to face. We've met face to face. We've turned our cameras on. They know exactly who I am and references, right? So as we meet today, the trust factor is between me and your teachers and your teachers are introducing me to you to say, this is a safe person to talk to and you can see me. And ethics and leadership, you can, I showed you my email address and my company name and you can go track me down that way and you really could find out who I am. This is, this is the danger though, when you get on these mess, and I'm not going to name them by name because I'm not going to give you hints on where to go and start chatting online if you're not doing it already. But there, there are really dangerous apps online and they're, they are known to have people who are not revealing their true selves as themselves on these apps. That is known. I'm in the US, so the FBI is reporting on that. So the FBI, our Federal Bureau of Investigations, they work with other country investigators as well. And they all know that there are people in these apps who are not reporting themselves as their true selves. So it is dangerous. And I've known people who have unfortunately taken people they've known online and gone to meet them and they're not who they say they are and they get themselves in trouble. And so that is a very, very real thing that can happen. And so it's fun to play games with people. I'm not, I mean, you, that is kind of what the nature of the game is, but you have to know your boundary and you have to know that you can't reveal too much personal information, which is why we say, don't tell people what your birthday is. Don't tell people what your address is. Make up a name yourself so that people can't find you and get up, get someone else to know what you're doing online. Don't keep it a secret so other people can see if there's something else going on because you're playing the game and may not see other things happening that may not be in the best light. So I, I always go look over my son's and he's 18, he's old and he's 19. He's old enough to know how to play games by himself, but I still look over his shoulder every once in a while and just say, you know, Hey, what's that company? Are you, do you know that they keep all of that chat data for a year? So everything you're saying to people, by the way, we did find this out in one of the apps, they keep your conversations for a year even after you get out of the chat. So these are things that, that people can go back and research and get those conversations. So, what, so things that you're typing in and things that you're telling people is all data being collected by companies and, and can be seen. By the way, it's a good thing because some of those people aren't, aren't on the up and up, but yeah, it's terribly dangerous. It's terribly dangerous. You just have to be very cautious. And it's really hard for, for younger people who haven't, you know, had the gray hair to go through and say, oh, I've seen that. I've, I've been playing games for a number of years, right? So it, it is dangerous. Nancy, also when children are using these face filters, a lot of them are collecting the mm -hmm. data the face, right? So how yeah children sort of protect themselves and would you say it is wise and I don't want to uh, put it in the heads for children to maybe not show their real identity just to be safe absolutely it's it's completely safe to do that I see a couple of blurred screens now and I think that's wonderful and and I think having nothing in your background is important not having pictures of your family behind you um, as you're, as you're online, you want a very clean background. I, I sweeped all of these books to make sure they were all right before I got online. I made sure that there were no, my husband collects gnomes. I had to make sure the gnomes were, 
you know, not doing anything. They weren't scary or anything, right? So you have to know what's going on in your background when you go online. Yeah, but I, I would totally use a face filter. If I were playing a game, I wouldn't even turn my camera on. And also about the cookies, I wanted to ask you, you know, nowadays. Oh yeah, of, cookies. So as a thumb rule, should children not click on cookies? They should turn them off. Mm -hmm. If you get that little warning banner at the bottom that says, and a lot of them are because of GDPR laws now for the entire European countries, all the cookies have to be, you have to really approve them. Um, I know that they're that way in the US now too. And I think they're only that way because they're trying to protect themselves against the European um, privacy laws. I turn them all off. There's no real reason to have them on. You don't need to be tracked anywhere. So when that cookie banner comes up and it generally comes up across the bottom of the screen and makes you accept them, or it appears that you have to accept them before you can continue on, you can check those and you can check them off. I also wanted to ask you, a lot of children have devices and we have heard that sometimes devices, because they track what you're doing online, they mm. share their data uh, within mm -hmm. apps. So is there any uh, mm -hmm. point you would give children so that they can be more careful if they do own a tablet, laptop, you know, of downloading unnecessary apps or things that they should be turning off, things, you know, practical advice? It's hard to, it is hard to give a blanket statement on how to protect yourself. But the one thing that I find for myself is turning off the location on your phone so that it can track where you are. And that's, that's a family decision. I think that sometimes families want that for their children and then some apps don't. So you may have to go into individual applications and know whether or not it's tracking a location or not. It's really hard to, to, to say that because I know as a parent, I have location on on my kids and then it's hard to balance that with the application. I think Rushin has one more question. Yeah. So um, my question was, so when we talk about this ethics, I saw a slide where it was written, it's free of bias. There could be a native bias in the minds because as you live in US and we live in India. So I think ethics can be different also, right? According to the place we live in. So how we actually know what are these ethics that we're talking about? <laughs> that is a great question. And that, that data analysis, I do not do that work. And I think it's brilliant that you have even thought about that as a question, how to remove that bias. So keep asking those questions. I just don't have an answer for you on how they do that. But I do know that they... They really study the data on biases. They really do. Hmm. And, and if you do find a bias in the data, then I think researchers find that terribly interesting. And, you know, they, they, they will in studies, I've seen this, they'll do a couple of things. If they find a bias in the study, one, they'll either end the study because the data at that point is um, flawed. Oh. The mm -hmm. other thing that can happen, and I've seen this also because I've been a part of studies, especially with COVID, I've been a part of a COVID study. They'll add questions to remove the bias. So they'll start, so they'll alter the question a little bit, but they'll mark it in the data. So I know in, in the US anyway, there are laws about laws and there are standards about how you collect data because you have to submit that to health organizations. Let's say you're doing a medication study and you find a flaw, you either have to start over or you'll have to start, if you have to change your question survey type thing, you may have to start your timeline again. So yeah, I think, I think the, the fact that you would even think to keep, you know, to think ahead of that is, is very important. 
Um, I think artificial intelligence is an interesting field because it's based on data, but you always have a human at the back end of that artificial intelligence. I think that word is kind of a fun word because it makes it feel like the computer's doing the thinking, when in reality, we're humans trying to tell a computer how to interpret the data. So we're actually doing the interpretation of the data. So it's, it's a fun field. And then you have deep learning where you're trying to teach the computer to, to learn on its own. Again, fascinating as you start thinking about bias and can we eliminate biases through some of that technology? I've, you know, those are fascinating areas of research. And Keep going with it. Yeah, and just a last question. Uh, so when we said that we need to ask parents about the company, that mm -hmm. if it's a good company or not. So sometimes a good company's data also gets breached. Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, uh, because if I'm downloading some app, whether it's an authenticated app or it's a, a mm -hmm. good app or a good company, there might mm -hmm. be sometimes a key logger with it that downloads to my laptop and then will read all the things that I'm typing. So how do we control that? I think it's very um, common with kids. Really good companies, we're going to correct that quickly. Let's, let's take Apple, for example. Really great company. I, you know, in my mind they make corrections very quickly, right? They had a flaw just this last week where somebody was, a, a nation state was attacking a zero day on, the, on a Mac and, and Apple released a fix for that within a day. So these, these trustworthy, really good companies come with warranties and people who are gonna fix things quickly. Some of your, less experienced companies, maybe newer companies are going to struggle that way. They're just not going to have the manpower and the, the ability to react as quickly. Did I get to your question? Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering because kids don't know about these key loggers and all the viruses that come to your uh, laptop. Because it comes when you download something. Even it's a very good application for game. The key logger mm -hmm. can be there, sitting somewhere, just spying whatever you're doing. So absolutely, thinking about a security perspective. But it's that's okay. Really Thank difficult. You. Yeah, it's really difficult. Uh, no, I, I realize that. I'm sorry. You know, we are running short of time. Kids, do you all have any other questions? Was this helpful? Yes. So if nobody has any questions, I wanted to just sort of recap that, you know, I think that what we have learned is that um, being online, please remember that you have a life uh, offline and the rules that you follow offline, sort of the same rules you should follow online, right? Don't talk to strangers. Don't give away information that you wouldn't do in an online. You wouldn't go to a stranger's party, right? You wouldn't do interaction with strangers. So, there, uh, you know, I'm sorry that there's a little child who wants to ask a question. Give me one second, Diana. Um, so the same common sense things that you would follow in real life is what it boils down to doing it online. You know, so if you don't, you wouldn't talk to a masked person, right? So do the same things. When teachers in schools are insisting, switch on your videos, log in with your name. There's a reason for that. Because if everybody follows good practices, like Nancy said, you're being a leader, right? You start with you. And um, don't be in a hurry to accept cookies. You don't accept sweets from strangers, which is why so strangely, even the cookie has been termed a cookie, right? Um, I mean, I right. know we haven't given you a lot of you know, practical advices as to how you could be safe, but I think it really boils down to common sense. And please remember that your adults, your teachers and your parents care about you. So if somebody is being not nice to you or even being mean, you wouldn't do anything wrong. You must report them and get out of the situation, all right? So please don't be afraid to share with a responsible adult around you. Uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, let Diana ask you the question. I'm sorry, Nancy, we're running over. I promise. No, you're okay. So, Diana, Miss, yeah, go ahead, Diana. Miss, what is ethics? Yeah. 
Nancy, you got that? No, what was the question? What is ethics? What is ethics? What is ethics? Is that the question? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so ethics is really hard to describe. And the first time I heard the word, I, no one could explain it to me. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange that this word is so important and yet you can't describe it. And so it's kind of like happiness. And it's kind of like, so as I, as I have gone through my adulthood, I've tried to figure out what it is and how to explain it to other people. Cause I always thought it was really st strange and yet intriguing that there was this word that, that was important, but people couldn't explain to me what it was. And over time I realized ethics was doing the right thing and it's doing the right thing all the time. So when you have good ethics, you have an ability to do the right thing. And, and curiously, all of those certifications that I have on your screen all require me to follow an ethics guideline of honesty and integrity. And then I wondered what those words even meant. So we all know what being honest is. It's not lying. But what's integrity? And integrity is having people count on you for doing the right thing, right? That my integrity is that I'm always going to do the right thing. I'm always going to do the honest thing. I'm always going to show up on time. I'm always going to do the right thing. And so honesty and integrity kind of, kind of become ethics. But when we talk about ethical companies, we talk about the companies that are doing the right things. And it's, it's different for every company. So it's kind of funny that we talk about that companies are ethical, but it's very hard to get to that definition. For Apple, we call them an ethical company, but why? Why do we call, you know, and I hate to use US companies only as an example, but you, know, you could think of any company and, and you could say that company is ethical, well, because they care about the planet or they care about people or they care about, right? But all of those things are different, right? Caring about people, caring about the planet. Maybe there's a company that's ethical because they, they don't do lab research on animals, right? But the sentence is they're always doing the right thing. And, and I very, and by the way, what I think is the right thing may not be what you think is the right thing. So, so having a general feeling that someone is doing the right thing is ethics. And there are entire disciplines, by the way, in, co in college degrees on ethics and leadership, because it's a study of how people think that way and what they think are ethics. So it's a great question of what is ethics, because it's, it's so hard to, to figure out and pinpoint a definition for. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, do you have time for one more question? Or... Of course, of course. Sorry, Emma, you know, for keeping up so late at night. Rushi, go ahead. Um, I got all my answers. Oh, great. He's good, yeah. Uh, so thanks again, you know, Nancy. This was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, this was really, really insightful. Um, you know, we really appreciate you being here this uh, late. And I hope that the children have also gotten a good takeaway of, you know, some of the terms and they're going to be more mindful going forward. And I guess the other thing to also come back to is the way Nancy is still learning, you know, and upskilling. Please remember that, you know, just because you know something today doesn't mean that you stop being aware. Uh, the other thing that Nancy and I spoke about was that, you know, when we were growing up, we used to have antivirus softwares, which now you don't look at, right? So, just yeah, be antivirus is almost a thing of the past. Right. So, you know, just because you know today what is to be safe doesn't mean that you don't keep your eyes open and keep learning on how to constantly be safe online. Mm -hmm. Good practices. So, thanks again, Nancy. 
You're welcome. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. You all are wonderful. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye, Miss. Thank you, Miss. Bye. Bye, Miss. Thank you.